big, loud baits produce big, aggressive fish. While that's often true, lake commandos know that isn't always the case. There are times when smaller means bigger. And today, Steve Benaz and Brett Alexander fine tune a couple of small, subtle presentations to tame the biggest smallmouth bass on one of the biggest lakes in the world. It's a Great Lakes bronze back battle next on Lake Commandos. I love fishing new water. The challenge is always the same. Find fish, trigger strikes. Ooh, that's a big fish. But what I really love is beating the other guy. I got a fish. This is Lake Commandos. Lake Commandos is powered by Nissan Titan. There are plenty of times when super clear water and sunny bluebird skies make locating and catching fish extremely difficult. Strong light penetration will send many species into deep water or under heavy cover. But that's not the case for midsummer Great Lakes smallmouth bass. And today, Steve Benaz and veteran Great Lakes guide Brett Alexander will be quite literally on the hunt for trophy big water bronze bags. You know, the one question I had is, is water temp is, are these fish going to be deep or are they going to be shallow now? The last time we fished together, they were shallow, even midsummer. So I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. Yeah, one thing with the, the Lake Michigan bass is on the lake side, they like to feed shallow because they're eating mostly gobies. Okay. Um, there's a few crayfish um, and there's some alewife that'll get blown in when you got winds, but today we got flat calm conditions and I'm guessing that it's going to be a shallow bite but you're always playing the odds if the if the warm water blows out and the cold water is in then they'll go deep they um, will so okay. you never know but I would say eight times out of ten they're going to be up shallow taking on one of the largest bodies of fresh water on the planet may sound like an impossible task but the Lake Commandos will limit themselves to a 20-mile stretch of shoreline in the Door County area of Wisconsin. Average depth in this collection of points, reefs, and bays is less than 15 feet, with water clarity close to double that distance. Bottom content is mostly rock and gravel, which is ideal for smallmouth, and forage is abundant in the form of a prolific invasive species known as the goby. Today's mission is to use all that information to locate and catch midsummer big water trophy smallmouth bass. My pattern today, it's going to be the general, the Berkeley Powerbait General. Yes, it's coming out in Powerbait. Now it's in Maxent and Powerbait, and uh, so it's it's a great option. My choice today is going to be a two and a half inch Berkeley Power Tube. Um, the reason I'm picking this is because I know there's a big hatch of little gobies. So I'm trying to match the hatch, and this is going to be the exact size of the bait that the bass are eating in here right now. But I'm going to rig it wacky on a 2 aught Fusion 19 drop shot hook. It's a great bait for smallmouth. It's got a good hook bend that gets them in the corner of the mouth, keeps them hooked up. I'm going to rig it with the Berkeley half head. I'm going to stick with the eighth ounce um, just so I get that extra distance for a long, long cast. I'm going to run it on six pound trialing fluorocarbon, 100% fluorocarbon, six pound because I want it light. I'm going to run about a six to seven foot liter up to eight pound Fireline Ultra 8. That's going to give me the good casting distance. It's going to give me that hook setting ability on a long cast. My choice on the line, I'm going to go with a real light four pound super line. It's a real light diameter. It's going to allow me to get extra distance on my cast. And I'm going to keep my fluorocarbon to a six pound test. Super, super light application, long, long cast. In terms of the rod, this is Nabo Garcia, villain 2.0 in a six foot, eight inch uh, spinning rod. I really like that length for good long cast, but good hook sets as well. This is a Revo X 
Abu Garcia, it's a mid-priced reel. That's a high-performance spinning reel. I love the Abu Garcia MGX. It's their high-end reel. Super smooth, long casting, and it's got a great drag system. My rod of choice is gonna be the Villain 2.0. I'm gonna go with the seven foot medium light with the extra fast tip. You get that extra whip, um, which allows you to get extra distance and get a long way away from the boat. Hey, Brett Alexander, great fisherman, great friend, and I'm really looking forward to today's battle. Anytime you're launching on the Great Lakes, weather is a primary concern. But the Lake Commandos have a near perfect day to work with. Air temps will be in the low 70s. Water temps will vary in the upper 60s with just a slight breeze under mostly sunny skies. But there is a slight chance of rain developing late in the day. You might be on this deep hump here. I just saw one right there. Right now, the water is so clear, you just have to experience Lake Michigan right now. And we've seen two fish. We've run probably a half a mile just looking for fish. When we left the ramp, it was about 70, 70 and a half degrees. And it's dropped down to 68.39 on the Garmin right now. And so we're just looking for fish. There's a big bass right here, big one. I marked them. Big one. I marked them. Okay. The commandos will start the day with Brett's power tube pattern, making long casts to cover water and contact bass that are roaming over large rock reefs and flats. How big a fish? Uh, he's a little guy, two and a half pounder. Jump right in the net. Nice. The veteran guide strikes first, and it's going to take all the skill Steve Panaz can muster to keep pace. Fish. There you go. Oh, that's a good one. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Abu Garcia for life. Berkeley Power Bay, fish bite and won't let go. Garmin Panoptics, all seeing sonar. Join the pros who switch to Garmin. Fraybills, Magnum Bait Station, trusted gear since 1938. Swagger Tackle, premium tungsten sinkers. And by Camp 365, the cabin that goes everywhere. This segment of Lake Commandos is brought to you by Fish Monkey Performance Fishing Gloves. Lake Commandos Steve Benaz and Brett Alexander are stocking midsummer Great Lake smallmouth bass in crystal clear water. For Alexander, this is just another day at the office. He's been a popular sought after guide in the Door County area for nearly 30 years and is both a successful tournament angler and outdoors rider. Hey, I really like fishing with Brett. Uh, the guy is wired in on Green Bay and he doesn't fish the, the, the lake side as much, which was kind of fun because we can get out there and, and fish fresh water. But this guy really knows how to put people on fish and this guy's really a good stick as well. This is why I love smallmouth fishing. I mean, they're just too big. Look at this. Oh, that's a nice one. Small. <laughs> Look at that in the water. God, it's beautiful. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna lift them up. Nice! <laughs> Whoa, that's a small one. Yeah, that's almost five pounds right there. Look at that beast. We're finding already that these fish want long casts. The ones that we've seen, we've been unable to get the strike. It's, these, it's a key is making long casts. You can see I got a little two and a half inch power grub. I got a Berkeley half head jig in there. That's an eighth ounce. And uh, look at this, look at this, look at that bass. Isn't that gorgeous? That's gorgeous, I'm gonna let him go. Well, you can see I snagged a goby here. This is why the bass are here and this is what they're eating. That's probably 90% of their diet. If you notice the color of the goby and the color of the tube that I chose, they're very, very similar. So I like the dark color. And then you put that gold flake in there and it's just about identical to the color of that goby. They kind of blend together. 
By precisely mimicking the primary forage and making long casts to cover lots of ground, the commandos start contacting fish consistently. Big fish. Uh, that's a five. Yeah. Oh, Brent, that's a giant. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I got a feather him. I put that four pound test on here. Yeah. So I'm really going light on these fish. I don't want to take a chance. These fish are not up real shallow, but we're on a deep water hump now. And it comes up to about six foot. And these fish are just scattered up on this hump. Um, but there's a lot of big fish up here. It's one thing about fishing deep water humps. It usually is a good spot for big, big bass. So this is almost a five pound bass right here. and. That's what we're hunting. And the smallmouth aren't the only ones falling prey to the power tube. What is this thing? I don't know. Whoa, 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 that's whoa. Not yeah, it's, no way it's just that's a about bass. a nine pound bass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, carp. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's got to count. That doesn't Come count on. for nothing. He's making a mess of my net, making a mess of my boat. Look at that tube. He ate that tube, though. Now, with time winding down in the first two-hour window, the guys are all tied up. Hey, dude, we got three minutes left in, your, in this competition for you, and then we switch over to my pattern. Yeah, there's time. Ooh. Oh, uh -oh. yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, there's boy. There's still time. Dude, that's a good one fish, too. Look at that one. Uh-oh. Look at that one. Woo! Look at the power even on these smaller fish. Get oh, it. he's not that small. No, he's not that small. That other one dwarfed him, though. Yeah. You know, I know this isn't a giant, but I'm up by one. So Steve Panaz will take a one fish lead into the second segment, and he'll have control of the boat with his power bait, the general pattern. But will the smallmouth get their marching orders? We'll find out. <laughs> This segment of Lake Commandos is brought to you by Camp 365, the cabin that goes everywhere. In the hunt for trophy Great Lakes smallmouth bass, Steve Panaz and Brett Alexander have switched from Brett's power tube program to Steve's power bait the general pattern. He's rigging the general wacky style and still covering water with long casts, but his presentation includes a tweak that's really paying off. Oh yeah, baby. Whoa, oh, that's a giant. That's a giant. Oh, oh man. I'll put the net, I'll put my rod down for that. Grab the net. Wow, that's a big one. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that's a giant. That one's pushing six. Oh, that Fusion 19 hook buried right where you want it. It's too hot. Drop shot hook's working. You know, it's we're, we're finding, look at the size of that fish. That's, that's one of the biggest smallmouth I've caught in a long time. One of the challenges when fishing a wacky worm in conditions like this, when the wind is blowing and you've got scattered fish, you kind of have to cover water is to not go weightless, but to add a little weight. And what I've done is I've added a small tungsten weight right here. I think it's a 32nd. And I've got it pegged right now with a little bobber stop so the weight doesn't slide down the line. It actually stays right next to the hook. And what that does is it drags the worm down like this, and it gives me a little bit more wobble and a little bit faster fall. And again, coupled with fluorocarbon, which also sinks, allows me to get that bait down to the bottom a little bit faster, gives that, that worm a little more shimmy on the way down. Ah, oh, that was a fish. Thought I saw your line running. God, darn it. Turn to look at the sonar. There he is. I got him. God, you got him. I got him. Darn. <laughs> Ah, that's frustrating. <laughs> oh, 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 what a jump! <laughs> oh, 
That hurts. That hurts. It's a light colored one. Yeah. That hurts that you caught that fish and I didn't. Yeah, I'm glad you <laughs> missed it. I had loosened my drag up so much on that other fish. It's about a three pounder, but I'll take it. After falling behind by a handful of fish, Alexander may have found the secret to success with the general. But will he run out of time before the comeback is complete? It'll be a Lake Commando sprint to the finish when we come back. If you've ever wondered how various boat and motor combinations will perform on the water, I recommend you check out Yamaha's selection of online performance bulletins. You'll find them under the Owner's Resource tab on the updated Yamaha website, yamahaoutboards.com. Both brands are listed in alphabetical order to make it easy to find the brands you are interested in. I run a Ranger 620FS with a Yamaha 250 VMAX show. Yamaha performance bulletins share key performance characteristics including miles per hour, fuel consumption data at various RPM, and more, and the data is gathered during real-world tests. Per the performance bulletin, top end speed for this boat when loaded with two anglers, four batteries, 45 gallons of fuel and assorted safety gear is just over 60 miles per hour. This information is incredibly valuable when shopping for boats because you know what to expect from a various boat motor combination before you head to your dealer's showroom. When it comes to achieving peak performance, maintenance matters. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Yamaha Reliability Starts Here, Berkeley Catch More Fish, Plano Protect Your Passion, Aquaview The Original Underwater Camera, Fish Monkey Performance Fishing Gloves, ARE Outfit for Life, Hodgman Gear with Grit, and by Berkeley Trilene, Anglers Trust Berkeley Trilene. This segment brought to you by Garmin Panoptics Live Scope, clearly the most amazing sonar technology ever. With details so incredible, you'll distinguish between different species of fish. Lake Commando Steve Panaz and Brett Alexander have successfully dissected a small section of Great Lakes shoreline and have locked onto a pattern that is consistently producing trophy smallmouth bass. You're on your own nut, you're up by two. That's a giant fish. Look at this thing. Get up here. Oh, yes! <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. He's over five. Oh, this is bigger than I thought. Look at that. Boom! He definitely had it dialed in right away, and it took me a while. I actually fell behind uh, by a number of fish. And it was just in the bait presentation, so a lot of times, you know, you just have to stay focused and and work, you know, that bait and slow it down or speed it up. There you go. No, you yes. slime. Tie it up, baby, if I get him in the net. Right on the little finger. There you go. Nice on this, dude. It's four and a half. Hey, one of the challenges when you're when you're building a pattern is to actually tweak it to make sure you got the right color. And when you're fishing head to head in a competition like the commando format, you see the little differences between this retrieve or this color or this rigging. Today, when we were making precision casts, it was that initial fall that was really the key in getting bit. Breaking down big water can be a daunting task for any angler. But rather than getting overwhelmed by the big picture, the Lake Commandos chose to concentrate on a single bay known to have good smallmouth habitat. The Garmin Lakeview mapping showed likely offshore reefs and shoreline flats, and the super clear water meant the guys could visually locate fish. The power tube and the general combined with light line spinning gear allowed for long casts to cover lots of water, and the clever tweak of adding a light weight to the wacky rig general provided the perfect action to trigger strikes. In the end, both commandos discovered the secret to success, and our head-to-head -head battle ends in a tie. 
What a comeback, dude. You were down by three with like I was down a half by hour left. Four then, actually for down a little by while. Four, yeah. yeah. You uh you rolled on you rolled on me on this deeper water. It's funny when when we were fishing, you know, more of the the, 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 the defined break lines, that slower fall was working better. Yeah. But out here, it really was key to move that bait and cover water. Yeah, out I was just covering a little more water. I'd slowed it down, but I was still covering a little bit more water than you. And, you know, we started fishing these bigger flat areas. And there, it's just isolated fish here and there. And I would like to cover a lot of water. The general rocks, that, that power, that tube rocks. I mean, what a, what a fishery. I mean, just being on this water is fun. Yeah, it was a great day, a lot of fun. Yeah, dude, great job. Thank you. For the GPS coordinates to this week's featured Lake or River, exclusive content, and info on the hottest new fishing products, follow us on Instagram. I'm Captain George Mitchell, and this is Coastal Chaos. There he is, baby, redfish on the jetties. You know, it used to be if you wanted to catch a trout or a redfish, you needed a shrimp and a popping cork. And you can still catch them that way, but sometimes you can't get live shrimp, and sometimes they just bite the fake stuff better. But either way, prospecting with a popping cork in an artificial is really the way to go, especially in a big bay like this, especially when you're in new territory. A couple of guys on a boat, drifting, prospecting, pop, 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 you'll catch some fish. Another great way to prospect, especially new territory, is with a topwater lure. You can cast them a mile, you can get lots of activity out of them. A big noisy lure popping along in the surface like that, you'll sure get the fish's attention, and sometimes they'll even show you fish that don't even bite. Boom, big old explosion like that, I love it. Nothing better than prospecting with topwater. There are times when you're gonna wanna use soft baits though, especially days when you wanna bounce the bottom. That's the beauty of the soft scented baits, and I'm especially talking about gulp. I love gulp because of the, the menagerie of colors you can get, the scents you can get, and also the different structures you can have. But what's even greater is they last forever. I've got some of these in a jar that I've had for years. If that color doesn't work, simply unhook it, put the next color on, work it. Heck, we've even gone from shrimp to mullet and put them right back in the box and use those things over and over. They're tough, they're strong, they smell great to the fish, and they will produce. You know, whether it's soft baits or hard baits, when it comes to prospecting, the key is to just keep moving. Move, boom, 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 work your areas, change your baits around, keep going, you'll find the fish. Coastal Chaos, tips for serious saltwater anglers.